So this might possibly work for this kind of thing. All right, so you got a game here, and um, if you run this game inside the debugger, you start it here, so now it's running, and that means it opened a command prompt, because it is a command prompt game, and now it asked me for something, and if I type in the answer, um, I can put in something here, and now, see, it tells me incorrect. So that's the joy of this game. Now, the point is, you can totally understand how this game works and alter how it works in there. So the first thing you could do was debug restart. Okay, now I could try to read this code and do static analysis and figure out what it's doing. And if I go over here, you can actually see it's not too dense. I've got launch codes over here, so it's going to put S that. It's going to print out this launch code. Then it's going to scan F something with a percent D here, which I was very slow to realize means the only thing it wants is numbers, decimal numbers. Then, down here, there's some prints. This should look like every other CTF. Here's the thing that prints incorrect. Here's the thing. If you're right, it prints A, and it prints one character. So the point of this game is if you guess the right number, you get one character. And there are 67,000 of these, so you end up with 67,000 characters you can put together, which turn into the next step towards getting the flag. That's the idea. And the reason they make it so big is to force you to do it programmatically. Right. So um, now I try to, so can I figure out by just watching this how it works? And I could sort of figure it out. So first, here's where you scan something in. Then you add H to the extended stack pointer. You move something from this memory location into EAX, and you move this constant, 0D, e, D, 5, F5, into ECX. Then you call this subroutine. Now, that subroutine is 401067, which is not very far away. Here I am at 401.03. See, I can just scroll down to it. This is such a small program. There's the subroutine, and the subroutine is add the two and return. Unfortunately, when I look at other ones, it changes for everyone. There's an XOR, subtract. So it takes a number, which it gets from the internal memory here, because there's data storage, and then it takes a number that's hard-coded in the code, and it does some mathematical operation on them, and that is what's going to be compared to what you typed in, and that has to be the right number. So I spent a while trying to reverse engineer this and predict the numbers, and I finally said, you know, this is for the birds. Let's try this. What it does, it, it, it prints something, and this is when you win. Up here, it puts out a prompt. It reads something from you. Then it does some kind of stupid math. Then it does a compare. Then it does jump not zero. If it's not zero, it's going to jump down to 54, which is down here and print you lose. So how about if I just get rid of this jump not zero? If I get rid of that command, then it will always accept every number that comes in. That's my plan. Let's see if that works. And this turns out to be incredibly easy. You highlight the line and you hit space, because this is what immunity is designed for, hacking Windows things. Now you just put in what code you want. I want a knock. So it's going to put in a knock. Now, this little checkbox down here took me a little while to figure out. There's a two-byte instruction here, 75 and 1E. So I can only put in one command here. My command is shorter than the existing command, so it's going to fill the extra bytes with NOP. That's just what I want to do anyway. So when I click Assemble, which my mouse is not moving. OK, now it is. All right, Assemble. It fills in that 90, and it puts the next one to 92. So this is pretty awesome. So now, um, I'm done with that. Now, I don't think I've run this game yet. I hope not. Now I hit Run, and now it's launched the game here. OK, and now if I put in 1, I win, and I get the byte, which is plus. So now I know, OK, so now this is pretty good, but I now have to write a program that's going to run 67,000 of these. And I realize this is not enough yet, because I would have to keep putting in guesses. So how about I don't even put in the guess? Let's try this again. Um, so I'm going to reload this thing, debug restart. OK, so now I want to kill two lines of this assembler. Here's the thing that scans it in from the reader. So I'm going to hit space and just make that knob. So it doesn't bother to read anything from me at all. OK. Then I go down to the, the jump not zero and get rid of that too. 
Okay, now I've got a version of this game that is what I call easy enough to play. Now all you do is run it, and you get the answer. That's what I want. So now the question is, I need to write script that will do this to 67,000 files, and then run them, and then accumulate your results. So that turned out to be very easy to do with exactly the same methods we're using here. Um, and I'll have to refer back to this thing. Let me do a debug restart. This thing turns out to be a really handy diagram to have. But that is available just in, um, okay, in here. So I wrote this thing called fix. So nano, uh, not nano, but um, notepad, fix. All right, first I installed Python, which was quite easy, and put it in the path, which is a obscure, this is sort of right of Java. When you install Python and it installs, it doesn't put it in the path, so you can't run it to the command line. You have to find an obscure hidden switch to turn that on. But anyway, so this is Python. The first thing is, um, I'm going to slowly build this thing called a flag. Here is, so in this one, this is my test case where I'm only doing 16 files to see if it's going to work. And then I ran the big one later. So first I, I take um, numbers here. Then I, hex is something that takes a number. See, a number in Python is just a real number in bits, and it can be interpreted as base 10 or base 16. You can use base 10 and base 16 interchangeably, but the hex function will give you a string that is the hex representation, starting with 0x. Here's another fun fact about Python. Strings are already like arrays. So you can just put bracket 2 to 4, and that will be from the second to the fourth character of the string. So if you put 2 colon, it will go to the second character to the end, starting at 0. So that will strip the 0x off the front. So now I will end up with 105f0.exe here for the file name. So now it's going to read that file. It's going to open the file. There are different modes when you open a file. You can read it, or you can read it in binary. I need to read it in binary because it is machine code. So I'm going to read the... All right, now I'm just creating a variable to put them in. This, I understand, is not the right way to use Python. Real Pyth This is not Pythonic because I don't know Python. The only thing I know is like C and Fortran. And there you have to make an array and fill the array. So I always do it in Python, even though people tell me if I would just learn Python better, I would know not to do this. But it doesn't kill me to do it. So this makes an array. The, all these files are the same size, 2,048 bytes. So this makes 2,048 bytes full of CCs, which are interrupt threes, just to have something to put in there. So now I'm going to read a byte. As long as there's something there, it's going to um, uh, put it in my raw. So I'm going to end up with an array called raw that has every byte in it that I can now play with. Because, so first I, this time I've read in the file, I can close the file, I've now read in one game to try to play. Now, all I have to do is find the code in here. So what I did was look for FF15, because if you look at immunity, now I had to find some part of this code that would guide me. And what I noticed was, it's always got this FF15. That is what scans to read from the user. That seems like something that they can't really take out. Then it's got um, a puts up here with FF15. There's two FF15s, but the second one is then followed by a call down here that's EB. And these things are always the same size. I looked at like the first five or six files, they were always the same. So I said, maybe they will always have that pattern. So what this does is it looks for an FF, um, FF15, and then if it's a greater, it skips the first one. So hits starts at zero. It finds the first one and then move from, skips it. The second one, because the first one is the call to um, printf, which I don't care about. I'm looking for the call to scanf. So the second time it finds that, it then looks to see if nine bytes later is a1, and 14 bytes later is B9. So that is my way to find my place. It's FF15, A1, B9, which is FF15 here, the A1 here, and the B9 there. Those four bytes in that pattern make me pretty confident I'm in the right place in the file. It is, I suppose, possible that some other bytes in the file might randomly match, but this is a pretty good start, and it turned out to work. So... Now that I've found the right place in the file, I just need to figure out which bytes to zero, and that's what I figured out. Um, to call to scanf is here, found plus zero through six, because that's what I looked for, was the my first primary marker was the thing I knew I needed to kill, which was this scanf thing. So where you found the FF15, kill six bytes right there, and that'll get rid of that one. And where you find um, 
The next one, which is up here at plus 1e for 1 and 2, here's two more bytes you write in. So now I have put in the two NOP strings that kill the instructions I don't like. Now I have to open an output file to write in binary and write this bytes out. Now I've created a new file called out.exe, which is a modified game that will not ask me any questions. It will just print out the answer. Now I was real happy to find out you can do command line in Windows just like you can do command line in Linux. Because a smart person might be able to do it. I'm a bum. You know, I just want to do this. Out.exe to out.txt. And you can just do it with os.system. And that's platform independence. You can import OS, you can execute command line commands for whatever your OS is. So this is a Windows command line command uh, that will put it in this file called out.txt. Now I can open that text and just read it. Now the first thing I did was I thought it was always going to be like the 14th byte of that text, and it isn't. They have like a hundred different messages, but they always have a starting parenthesis followed by the byte you need. So then I wrote code that would look for a starting parentheses and two bytes later, a closing parentheses, and then print out the thing in the middle. And then I found out that some of the winning bytes are parentheses, which screw it up. So I went back to the original plan, which is I just look for a parentheses. And oh yeah, in fact, this was this an earlier version. I guess I, fi I fixed this later. This was my original plan. Look for the first left parentheses and the first right parentheses. And if there's no left parentheses, or there's no right parentheses, or this one is not two to the right of that one, then you fail. And it did fail when I ran it on the first after the first 16. So then I just got rid of these other conditions. I just say, as long as you find a left parentheses, just give me the next byte. And that's the out byte. And so it adds that to this flag thing. It runs all the files, and then it prints the flag. Unfortunately, when I did that, the flag I got was useless. Um, and I've got it out in my main operating system here. And this, I think, is why they actually canceled this one. I mean, one person apparently solved it, and I don't know how, because the flag is awful. The flag is here. OK. Open with Smalltron. There. This is the flag. JavaScript, nothing but punctuation marks. Now, this is, at first, I thought this was BrainFuck, because I didn't see the JavaScript. I spent a while trying to run it as BrainFuck. It's not BrainFuck. It's JavaScript, but it's screwed up JavaScript. Um, there is, this is a well-known trick for JavaScript with only punctuation marks. Um, you can't. I was trying to do a, there's a Python challenge, too, that needs something like that. There's JavaScript only, that's only punctuation. You can do this in JavaScript. And there was this thing um, at slacker.io. Um, and I managed to find it, but now I can't find it. Um, there's a, this, there is some Python that looks like that, but not exactly like that. It has a dollar sign or something or an underscore. And this one won't even run. It has the unmatched open and closing square brackets. So there's something wrong with the JavaScript. And you have to figure out what they meant instead. And I was sort of lost at this point. The point is you can define a variable that's just like a punctuation mark, like an underscore. And then you can, it, it amounts to almost brain fuck. But you can, you can do JavaScript that is all just punctuation marks. But this is bad JavaScript, so I don't know what you're supposed to get out of it. Anyway, but I thought that was useful. Uh, there's some useful techniques there, both in how to use this thing, immunity, and how to use Python together with it to automate hacking in Windows. And that's what I wanted to show you. So I'm going to stop this one. And I understand somebody else out there wants to talk about one of these, which is great. This is uh, 127, um, 67K. All right.